surprise niggas like a blind date L rhyme great And I'ma increase the crime rate for old time's sake Run with me and I'ma make you a star When me and my crew hit the clubs We go straight to the bar Leave them empty I cruise through all them in the M3 Never pay for parties Say my name and I'm in free I'm on some money G car shit Superstar shit Selling niggas that wet shit Right out the jar shit I'm dumb hot I wreck you and your young flock Keep the gun cock Represent one block 139 nigga The danger zone We quick to put a bullet in the stranger's dome I'm known to kick a rough rhyme And rock much shine Yo I'm out I done took up enough time We out No doubt You know how we do Flamboyant for life And we are live Here at the Hot Box Woo that's right you guys We actually have a deaf mute convention in here Listeners at home they are waving their fucking little hands around right now. So happy to be here, everybody. We are here in the fabulous Ming Lounge in the lovely and historic Republic Cafe, you guys. So we're going to fire it up tonight, but for those listening at home and for those who are new to the room, coming all the way to, front, to us from the great fabulous state of Utah. Woo! Is that correct? Yeah, are you, are, 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 did, I, did I talk to you online? Uh, yes. What's your name? Are you from Utah? There we go. Exactly. I was like, I, don't worry. We don't. We're not. I have saints in my family too. I will not do anything. To you. I'm a Jew. We yeah. call these motherfuckers Gentiles too. That shit's hilarious when you do that. <laughs> and she, she gets it. She's a little confusing. You'll hear her a bit later. Uh, you guys, uh, we do it a little different. We get, we do it a little different in here. We have lovely people. If you guys want to see some unfunny shit later? Come on in. It's free. Um, I mean, you get a sample of it right now. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, we have a, a guest host every week. Uh, this week we have the fabulous and lovely returning hot boxer, Amelia Duos, gracing us with her presence tonight. Uh, the hot box is video recorded. You can be opted out of the video if you like. Uh, you know, if you get a little bit too risque or a little bit too... It's pretty hard to do in this room, to be honest with you. This is, this is scum mic, you guys. Let's just own it. Let's fucking... Every time needs a fucking scum mic. If you have a million people, you need a fucking scum mic. That said... This is a leftist scum mic, you guys. This is a leftist fucking scum mic. I won't, I, I don't attack people who are center or right or anything like that, but don't come in here with that fucking, you know what I'm talking about, malarkey. I mean, this is still fucking Portland, you guys. We all gotta fucking go to work tomorrow. God damn. All right, you guys, uh, there will be a light in front of you. It'll flash red. When you have one minute left in your set, there's a timer that'll be in front of you counting down from seven minutes. You don't have to do the full seven. But you're welcome to do it. Stretch your legs, man. Get get good. Get the time together to do the showcase that nobody's going to put you on anyways, you guys. <laughs> oh, my good. So let's start it off. Let's start it off light. In the news this week on Thursday, it was discovered that a depressed mother of twins drowned her children in the bathtub until they were dead. Just saying, uh, she really killed that set, you guys. You know, uh, too soon, too soon. I actually wrote another punchline for that that I completely forgot, you guys. So much better than that. I wish I could go and have a do-over, and I can't. You don't get a do-over. You just do your fucking time, and you bring up the next comedian. And the next comedian is coming to you live in the Ming Lounge, one of our favorite hot boxers. Let's give it up, everybody, for Miss Linda Marcus Smith, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Give it up for Christopher. Oh my God. How dirty can I get? Will you guys go with an old lady getting dirty or not? Yeah. Huh, Luke? Will you do yeah. that? Can you handle it? I don't want to gross anyone out. <laughs> so they're having Portland's funniest. I didn't go and try out for it, mostly because I was too damn depressed and sick. But I thought about doing it because uh, I thought it was Portland's punniest. I read it wrong. Uh, I could really rock that stuff, right? As an old person, that's what you want to hear, right? You don't want real jokes from an old person, do you? So, uh, lately, everybody has been doing 82nd Avenue jokes. And I was doing them. Because, like, I dress up to get attention in this town because people look past you if you're old. And I don't want to be ignored. I get worse. So I've been dressing up, putting on hooker heels. <laughs> Side note, that's also called Fuck Me Pumps. <laughs> and I've been going out to 82nd and Powell to get people to look at me, but everybody's <laughs> doing. That's the only place you can get any attention in this town. With this Me Too movement, taking away my self-esteem. 
Where do you think I got my self-esteem for myself? <laughs> no, not, not a chance. When I grew up in, in this town, you got attention from car, par, honking cars, wolf whistles, cat calls, and the only place left in town to get that is 82nd of Powell. So that's my, my jam, but everybody's been doing 82nd of Powell jokes. I don't have you heard them lately? They, everybody's been doing them. It's so hack now. So uh, I, I did a strip tease twice in a row at Dante's instead. <laughs> Screw it. I'll still get attention. But I only stripped down to my sports bra, you know, because I didn't want anyone to figure out that my areolas are as big as everybody's Uranus. So, so I didn't want that happening. I'm working on that joke. I know it has possibilities, you know. Your areola, Uranus. You said your name is Jordan and you're from Utah. I'm not from Utah, unfortunately. But I'm Oregon, Oregonian. What part of Oregon? Do you want to say? Salem, Oregon. Salem, I won't pick on that. I won't pick on Salem. I could, but I won't. <laughs> but when they said that you were Jordan from Utah, I was like, I'm Jewish and I'm glad you're not Utah from Jordan. <laughs> that would be uncomfortable. Um, I do like Jordan almonds, though. Um, that's all I know about Jordan, so <laughs> I'll move on. Yeah, um, I've been trying to stay really cool and get along and understand young people. You know, I don't know if you've heard old people rag on the young. Have you heard this? I get sick of it, right? Because you guys are awesome. We screwed up the world. Side note, I'm old, so I'm the problem and none of the solution. But we screwed up the world, and as soon as I kick the bucket, you get to fix it. So in the meantime, you know, like I'm trying to, if I'm going to give you the world to fix, I want to know who you are, right? So I thought it would be, I thought I was going to look at my notes and I'm not. <laughs> Screw it. You know, like I'm winging it. This is me on a tightrope, right? And there's no safety net. So I was like, um, I have to figure out what young people are all about if I'm going to give you the world to fix when I kick the bucket. So I've been out trying to figure out, you know, so I asked a lot of young people, what do you hate and like about old farts? And they're like, we hate it. We hate it when you rag on us. Okay, what do you like? Well, we'd like it if you get to know like what it is we are talking about. So I went out to figure out the world from a young point, person's point of view. And um, so I've been out there trying to figure out things. And like, for instance, uh, you know, like there's this new word you guys got. It's like molly cuddle, molly cuddle. I don't know, something like that. You know, I'm not real clear because I'm old. It's good. Uh, but, you know, like I've never done molly, the drug or the girl. Never done that. But it, I think, I, I don't know what the word means, but if I ever did do molly, the girl or the drug, I'm sure I'd need to cuddle. That's all I know about that. And I, uh, you know, like I knew I could be hip if I would just like learn Instagram, you know, figure that word out, right? So I got my ass on the bus and I said to some four year old, uh, can you show me Instagram? And uh, you know, I wound up three days later in a back alley with a high schooler and with my tits in the air. And <laughs> like, I should have had a warning because in my day, if you went to a party and scored coke in the first five minutes, that was your Instagram. But I was clueless. Uh, I wanted to learn Snapchat, right? Because I thought I'd be hip and dope. So I got on another TriMet bus and asked a high schooler, different demographic, this will work. I said, hey, can you uh, tell me about, you know, Snapchat? And uh, the bus driver stopped the bus. He was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. And he started talking about it. And I'm like, oh, snap, he wants to chat. Uh, That's about it. That's all I can do with your hip words. But I figure that I'm getting uh, hip, woke, and dope from all of this education I'm giving myself. And I can relate to you, Luke, much better. Uh, get more laughs out of you once in a while. Um, and so I think I'm becoming hip, woke, dope, and uh, AF. As a, I'm getting AF. Yeah, and that kind of negates a whole hip, woke, and dope, don't it? You can go right through. Yeah, you're a sight for sore eyes, I'll tell you that. People. Um, I like looking at umbrellas that are lit. That's awesome. Is this my close-up? 
Mr. DeMille? And I have 44 seconds. I'm not going to give a second back to the room. No, I'm kidding. I'm Jewish, so I'm tight with time, too. That's about my time. I'm Linda Marcus Smith. Thank you. And I don't know where the host is. Is that you? I wish I had half your body. Actually, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give it up for Linda Marcus Smith. Uh, it's my first time hosting. I wanted to wear something that would kind of go with the aesthetic, but I didn't have anything that matched wall carpet, so I splashed some soy sauce on myself. And put on my tightest pair of pants. Which I'm pretty sure my butthole's white. They're so tight. I'm definitely cutting off a pump or two. Um, I thought about being a dancer, and you know, all these girls are wearing butt plugs at work. None of them even have ass sex. So I don't understand what the fuck they're doing. They're just afraid to show people their hole. <laughs> so I was thinking, like, dude, they should, like, I should invent some, like, glitter for your asshole. I'll call it, like, piles of glitter. And then I was thinking, like, we should have gum for your butt. Call it bum gum, you know? Like, do <laughs> you have any gum? No, but I got some for your ass. <laughs> like, then it tastes good, smells good. If you have prolapsed lips, you could probably blow a bubble. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so up next we have Trevor Tiptone. Let's give it up for him. There he is. There we go. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, Linda. <laughs> Linda, you're going to be an America's Got Talent finalist. Yes. What are, you you got to do that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I haven't been here in a while. We have a PA system, actually, and we have a tape stage. This is like the best. Now I know like my limits. So if I fall off, that'll be embarrassing. Um, so then you stand right there. Maybe the mic stand goes there. I don't know. I fucking love this mic. Who here is not a comic? You're not a comic? I'm not a comic. Are you, okay, are, you're not a comic? Yes. Why are you guys here? I'm really curious. <laughs> Who comes to this place? Are you just, did you see it online or something? Yeah. Respect. Okay, how about you? I have another open mic that's four doors down. It's going on at the same time. Okay. You got to see it. There we go. Oh, you have an open? Okay. Nice. Okay, where are we at? I'm just going to fuck around for six minutes. Um, I got a new job. Thank you, Linda. Thanks. Um, I really wasn't looking for the clap. Uh, yeah, I feel like getting a new job is like just choosing... It's the same as like choosing the type of depression you want, you know what I mean? It's like, do I want to look at the computer and get that kind of anxiety? Or do I want to just like talk to terrible people in retail and just have that depression where you feel worthless? It's, it's a, it's a toss-up. Do you ever talk to those people who like actually like their job? Like, oh my god, I love my job! It's like, whenever I hear that, I immediately just think like, you're either a virgin or a psycho. Did you raise your hand you love your job? God damn it. What's your job? I don't have one. <laughs> hey. Wow. Okay. Hey, keep the, keep the nice tags on the DL while I'm on stage. You have bigger, bigger claps than me. No, it's, I, I don't know. I don't like working. I, uh, whenever I get, like, down on my job, I get sad. I just always think of, like, I don't know, there's worse things. Like, one thing I do to really lift my spirits up is I go to Fred Meyer, and I go to the, <laughs> the self-checkout, and I just see the guy that has to manage all the high people that don't know how to look up fruit. And he's just managing stoners that shouldn't be at a store. Okay? And then he's just managing these robots that are terrible at their job, but somehow they took his... So now he's just managing that something that's going to take over the world. It's a weird one. Um, just like this mic. Uh, oh, yeah, I, uh, I stopped smoking weed. Uh, I had a weird thing happen to me. I, uh, I got real high, didn't realize I got in my car, sat down in the driver's seat, and then I threw my keys on the passenger seat, and I was just sitting there. Then I realized, oh shit, I need those to drive. <laughs> so then I was driving and I got lost. And it was real bad. And I was like 30 minutes late to this mic. And I'm still a little high from that moment, but after this, I don't think I'm going to smoke anymore. That's just what I'm thinking. I'm going to sit down. I'm pretty high. Um, yeah, 
jobs are fun. I, uh, the worst job I've ever had was I was a dishwasher. And the reason that job sucked so bad wasn't because I was washing dishes. It was because that was the best I've ever been at a job ever. And it was like, I, I have a college degree and I'm just washing dishes. I, I, was, I was good at washing dishes. I'm not trying to come up here and like talk down on you guys because of how good I am at cleaning the dishes, but like I'm fucking good at washing dishes. And you know, it just happens. It's weird because I probably would never have gotten that job if I didn't go to college because I would never have had to get a second job to pay for my student loans. So it's like, it actually got me to where I need to be, a dishwasher. So I'm killing it right now. Um, where are we at? I, uh, I just moved back from, I was living abroad for the past couple of years. I, uh, I spent a lot of time in Southeast Asia and it was interesting over there. One of the things like you immediately realize when you get there is like the standard of living and over there compared to here it's just like it's so different it's so easy in portland it's so easy here and like when i got off the plane in malaysia the first thing they were doing they were handing out flyers that said and they were like warning about human organ harvesting because that's like a problem over there people actually get their organs stolen and then when i got off the plane in portland they were handing out flyers for plastic straws and i was like Tomato, tomato, Portland. It's not, let's, let's figure this one out. Uh, it's weird. Um, one thing I didn't like before I went over there, I hated it when white people would bow. Like over in Southeast Asia, they don't, they don't shake hands, they bow. And I just fuck, I didn't like it when white people would bow to me. And then I went over there and I kind of experienced it. Like, oh, okay, I get it now. I get the whole bowing thing. And I come back to Portland and... I fucking hate it when white people in Portland <laughs> bow at me now. It is, it's just basically like saying, hello, I'm socially unaware. How are you today? <laughs> it's just awful. Um, the weirdest thing I think I experienced there was definitely the toilets. The toilets, are, they don't have toilet paper. They have like this bidet-inspired super soaker. It's like <laughs> 300 PSI, and it cleans the whistle. And it's weird, like, the, it's weird, like the first time you use it, it's weird because you gaping open, you're just yes. vulnerable, and I never thought I'd be holding like an object that looked kind of like a gun up to my butthole, <laughs> and then you have to like think about pulling the trigger, and you just, you, you just, you hit it, and like, the weirdest part about it was, was that it felt so good, <laughs> it was great, and I just always thought like, if we had those in the U.S., this would be such a better country. Because, like, imagine those people that are just like, I just don't understand how someone could be gay. And they just use one of those bidet super soakers for the first time. Just pull the trigger, walk out of the bathroom, and they're like, I understand everything. <laughs> that is why my porn categories are all men. It's just the whole thing. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Trevor Tatong, everybody! Yeah. Trevor, I gotta tell you though, the first load uh, that you take in your ass compared to a bidet, you're gonna be really fucking disappointed. Uh, people do not produce, like, unless they're in the ropes, unless they're doing the ropes. The ropes, the only natural male supplement guaranteed to provide you with the thick, ropey loads that they're named for. Ropes. Look it up. Rope gang! <laughs> Rope gang, you guys, who says Rope there's gang. no such thing as second chances? On Thursday was discovered the depressed mother of twins had drowned her children the night before. She was described by friends as being hysterical. I don't know, it didn't sound that funny to me when I read the article. <laughs> Thank you very much, you guys. Too soon? Woo! Too soon? It was Thursday, whatever, it was Thursday. Uh, ooh, I love coming into the hot box, you guys. I love, uh, I love coming in here to the Ming Lounge, riding the bus in and coming back to dr driving by the concert venue and playing kind of a guessing game. At, how old is the band at the concert venue tonight? And I can always tell when it's an old band because the women out front look like the kind of hookers I could afford. <laughs> Thank you yeah. very much. Let's give it up for the old prostitutes. There's no, uh, there's no retirement, but there is a Hall of Fame. I keep it in my place. You can come by and look at it. I charge a nickel, which is what the old prostitutes also charge. <laughs> 
Come up for bat days. Bring the kids. <laughs> Come to the stage. We're gonna bring in your kids. He's kind of my. He's kind of one of my comedy children. Although I haven't molested him yet. <laughs> this is a true story. This is a true story because I I have a joke about when I was a kid that I was the benefic beneficiary of molestation. I got, and he said, you know, statistically, he says, I'm going to come to your house. And the first time I came to your house, I thought you were going to molest me. And then you didn't. And I said, and then you just came back. And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's just like, I just kept trying. <laughs> Let's give it up for a guy who won't stop trying. Mr. Kevin Perez, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so gay, dude. Uh, <laughs> No, yeah, I went to his house, I thought he was going to molest me, and I just kept on going, uh, and he's never done it. I even slept at his house, and he still didn't do it, it's weird. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, I'm going to start with some shit uh, that I just thought of. Um, so, it's totally cool to, like, jerk off to a 20-year-old Instagram page, as a chill. Um, but it is fucked up to scroll down and jerk off to pictures from 2013, though. So, yeah. Um... You guys ever run into your crush uh, at the grocery store while you're in the middle of trying to steal some cheese? <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. Uh, and your heart rate goes up and you're already shoplifting, so by the time you get out of the store, the cheese is all melted. <laughs> you got cheesy balls for the rest of the day. Uh, I know you guys ever had this problem. Um, that was some other stuff. I don't know, it's all messed up. Yo, yeah, what the fuck? Trevor was talking about the straws and shit. Uh, Fuck, I didn't catch the whole thing, but it's kind of weird that, like, uh, in the middle of, like, a shitload of Mexicans getting, like, deported, like, and it's really fucked up, that people would be like, yeah, but what about the straws? <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, there won't be an earth to get deported from if you don't fucking stop using plastic straws. Uh, apparently that's what the fuck some people care about. Uh, I don't ever once give a fuck about using a straw. Uh, I don't think that shit. I didn't even give a fuck when I was at school and they show you those fucking sad pictures of like geese and shit with the six pack thing around their neck. <laughs> fuck that geese. Fuck those turtles too. I don't care about turtles. Uh, when I was in Mexico, uh, I had turtle eggs. Um, and it's like a delicacy out there, but it's super illegal to eat turtle eggs because of the whole like extinction in the straw issue. Uh, it's all fucked up. But the thing is, I really enjoyed them. They were pretty good, but um, my uncle bought me a dozen of them and then like. I had three while they were hot, and it's nice. You like take them, you like poke them, and then you put hot sauce, salt, and some lime in it, and then you squirt it into your mouth. And then, like, halfway through, they were lukewarm. So it just felt like taking lukewarm cum shots. Because it's like a yolky thing, and you squirt it into your mouth, and then eventually, by the, like, the last bite, it was just cold cum running up your mouth. And I had to finish them because it would be disrespectful. Uh, but I didn't take all those yolks. It's just like sucking a dick, I would guess. It's kind of disrespectful to a. Uh, not swallow. I don't know. I don't mind girls and swallow. It's chill. Uh, I don't know. I keep thinking about how gross my dick is. Cause I don't know if any of you guys are fucking uh, circumcised or not. How many cir how many uncircumcised boys we get out here? <laughs> right. <laughs> my man. Uh, no, but like um, when I pee, like there'll be a little like dribble of pee on it. This is gonna be super TMI. It's gonna be really weird to talk about. Uh, Sorry, not that word, but uh, anyways, I'll like get a little piece of toilet paper and like I'll just like wipe it down and like, all right, cool, I'm good. Because if not, that little like drizzle will come out into your pants. Uh, but the thing is, like, whenever I shower or like whenever I'm like, just playing with my dick, I'll like pull the hood back and there's like little gross toilet paper remains in it every single time. It's really nasty. So I'm thinking about getting circumcised uh, to solve to remedy the issue. So if any of you guys know a guy who's down to uh, circumcised like a 28 year old, just let me know. Uh, <laughs> that's a weird question to ask though, right? Just anybody's, hey, you know a guy who circumcised me? Um, no, they would be cool. I think my dick would definitely look bigger if I got it circumcised. Whenever I look at like dicks at por on porn, I mean, that guy's got like a huge dick, and I'm like, it looks the same size as mine though. Like, yeah, but he's just like circumcised, so like the mushroom thing is like out more. I don't know. What do you think? Is like, okay, yeah, it's weird. Uh, I remember the first time I saw a, circ a, a circumcised dick. This, like, this is before I watched porn. Me and my homie were like really young, and we went swimming at a creek. And he's like, "Can't have any underwear, so I can swim in his underwear." So he just swam naked, which was like chill with me. But his dick was uncircumcised. It looked so weird to me. I asked him what was wrong with his dick. And I was like, uh, "There was no jokes in that. It was just a little anecdote. I wanted to share it with y'all." 
<clears throat> um, do you guys ever fuck a hot uh, 20-year-old and then it turns out to be two 10-year-olds in a trench coat? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Save that fucking set uh, with that banger of a horrible fucking joke. How was I even? I thought about it because I just thought about it in the moment, and then I was like, "No, I would. No, you would find out a long time before. If you stuck two ten-year-olds on a trench coat, their arms would still be really short, and uh, you'd find out really quickly if not what's going on." And, I thought, and then I was like, "Oh, this would be a funny sketch, right?" And I was like, "No, it wouldn't. <laughs> no, it wouldn't." It wouldn't be funny to stick two ten year olds in a trench coat and fuck them uh, <laughs> at all. I was just giving you guys the warning. Don't, and don't steal my bit, too. It's mine. <laughs> uh, find, out you, find out if you guys are fucking ten year olds in trench coats. Uh, I'm fucking outing your ass. Um, let's see. It's fucked up because like, I'm digging my mind for shit that isn't racist to say. That's just wrong. Okay, I'm going to try this out. Um, you know, it's fucked up because people apparently like how like illegal immigrants are getting popped and deported and like apparently ICE agents are everywhere. And it's fucked up. The most fucked up part is like if children are legal and like their parents aren't, they'll get separated. But you know, it's going to be a six-year-old Mexican kid out there like, yo guys, party at my house, dude, my parents got fucking deported. <laughs> and that'd totally be me when I was 16. I'd get home, I have like a fucking F in math. I know my dad's about to beat my ass. i get home, the ice structure like down the street. There's like, no one home, like, fuck yeah. I'm dancing, my parents got deported, my parents got deported. It'd be sick for a while. But then it turned into like a Home Alone sequel or something. It'd be like Home Alone 5 or whatever, uh, my parents got deported. And then instead of like Harry and Marv, it would be um, like just ICE agents trying to break into my house. And take me to like uh, fucking CPS or something. And instead of Harry and Marv, it's just those like... The two dumbest ICE agents are like, who do we send to get, it's like a kid we forgot. And it's like, they just send these guys and they show up and my house is all booby trapped and shit. And instead of them being the wet bandits, they'd be the wet back bandits. No, uh, it's too harsh. It's all right, uh, it's too early for the W word, guys. Um, you know, it's funny, I, I used to, Trevor used to wash dishes as well, but I was fucking terrible at it. And all the, and all the Mexicans would make fun of me because uh, they would also, they call me seco. In Spanish, it means dry, because they were calling me a dry back, because I wasn't good at manual labor. Manual labor. And it was like the worst burn I'd ever gotten at. This has been my time. You guys take care. Bye bye. Let's give another hand for Kevin Perez. Come on. That was awesome. All right, so growing up, I always wanted to be a Bond girl. Like, it's just a dream. They went nowhere, but something I kind of always wanted. And then the last few movies, I was like, you know, like, I'm going to cancel that. I don't want to be a, gone, a Bond girl for a geriatric cancer patient. It's <laughs> just fucking disgusting. Like, it just killed the whole vibe. Like, how? I thought he's supposed to stay good looking, not just try and grow into older, disgusting manhood. Huh. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, the other day, someone was like, hey, do you, do you have a headshot? And I was like, no, but I, I've had someone put a gun to my head several times and almost shoot. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a few fun facts. Guzzling Roundup is just as detrimental as watching The Bachelorette. <laughs> uh, there's this product out that seems to be all... Uh, I don't even know how to say this. So, poopery. You guys know about it? You've, heard, you've seen the commercials are pretty fucking funny. Um, I don't ever want to be caught with that in my purse. It says a lot. But recently my mom gave me some. I was like, fuck yeah, I'll give this a go. And I was at work. And then it started burning really bad. And I realized you're not supposed to spray it in your hole. You're supposed to spray it in the can. I recently heard that Nazis and Jews have joined forces. So I was like, this is great. I get to take out my Rudolph the Big Red Nose Hitler costume and dust it off. And now it's Rudolph the ah. Big Red Nose Hitler costume. All right. <laughs> so up next, we have Luke Maurer. Yeah. Do you have a hand? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? I'm in lounge. Uh. <laughs> Full room here. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. So uh, I am a nerd. That's how I identify. That's that's what's going on with me. Uh, always been one, like from birth. 
came out that way. Uh, and uh, I was proud of that fact for so long, too. I was like, fuck yeah, nerds are taking over the world. Uh, fast forward, and, and we did. We did that thing, <laughs> we took over the world. And, but I don't know if you've noticed the world lately. Not, not going so great. Uh, to be honest, we kind of fucked it up. It's, uh, yeah. Now, it turns out to... Like, we were so good as, like, plucky underdogs, right? We were so good. But then, uh, to actually run the world, you got to do more than to play with technology and uh, be bad with women. Like, that's not enough. Uh, no. Uh, but, like, we, we met well. We had ideas. Like, we saw things were fucked, and we were like, oh, okay, we can change things. We can change the world. So we came up with the Internet. The Internet has changed the world. From one uh, where the media is run by GE and News Corp uh, into one where the media is run by Google and Facebook. Whoopty shit. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's like the house was on fire, so we added Wi Fi, right? I don't know. If you tweet things like burning to death, lol. Uh, so, uh, I've never been great with women. That's just the, the thing about me. Uh, could probably, you know, sort of follow some of the nerd thing, I suppose. But, like, when I was growing up, uh, as, like, as a teenager, my parents never had any rules about having girls over for the same reason they didn't have rules about time travel. <laughs> or securities fraud, right? That's just not... You know, have, gotta have a rule for everything. We also didn't have a sign saying no orcs allowed out front. You know. That's just, um, but yeah. Uh, uh, I got a girlfriend now. Somehow. I still don't know exactly how that happened. Uh, except, no, that's right. I do know how. Uh, it's because I thought she'd hit on me. Uh, yeah. She had not, but my being wrong is what's, what, what, the reason I'm in a relationship now. Uh, yeah, She just... Actually, just wanted to see it, like, you know, a comedy show later. Um, uh, and, uh, so, I don't know, that's, that's the key for me, it's just, it's, like, I don't have any confidence unless I think I've already won. That's, that's, what the, that's the, the point there, yeah. Now, but before that, like, people would tell me, uh, like, you know, what women like to see, the, thing, the biggest thing women want to see in men is confidence, to which I can only say, well, shit. Um, <laughs> What's the second biggest thing that we got? <laughs> Could it be despair? I can do despair. Got that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I, I'm like an empty forest. I'm tall and I have no game. That's in summary what's going on with me. Uh, a bunch of this is just so, social anxiety. Uh, it's just the product of that. Uh, and, uh, and that's hard to work on. It really is. Uh, you're just you know, scared of shit. Uh, it's hard to overcome that shit. Uh, I did find that there was one thing that uh, has helped me um, uh, at least a little bit of the way uh, toward having confidence with women, uh, and that is something I like to call strip club therapy. That <laughs> had an effect, yeah. Because, um, you know, little known fact, uh, the word stripper comes from the Greek for naked therapist. <laughs> <laughs> it's little known, I guess it's not true, but the point is there. Uh, no, this wasn't like first like treatment option I went after. No, no, no. Uh, like, but I tried things like pills and therapy, like regular clothes therapy. Uh, didn't do the trick, uh, and so I got creative. I guess. Uh, actually, before going to strip clubbing, uh, I had another idea, which was taking salsa lessons. I had a good theory for this. I think the theory was just like this: that I would take salsa, get good at salsa, at least good enough. Uh, and then I would go and it'd be like being a flight simulator, right? Where it's a safe environment and I can ask and not actually get shot down, right? Uh, but then I have it like a simulation of, of dating. Uh, so maybe by sheer muscle memory I'd be able to ask women for other things besides dancing. Like dates and whatnot. Uh, problem, uh, I went there and I sat down and uh, I uh, went to like, you know, Song ends, I go to Ask Girl, uh, and I freeze in place, and nothing happens. I flunked the flight simulator, it did not work out, it was very frustrating. Uh, yeah, uh, this is like I went to the bank and got weird about asking for money, right? Like, uh, I don't know what people will think of me if I ask them for the thing they came here to do. Uh, that's, I don't know what I was afraid of, it was very frustrating. Uh, but, so, uh, I, I did have one realization, though, that, that somewhere in me, and I don't know how this happened, I just got a lot of shame issues about sex. Uh, I didn't grow up Catholic or anything like that. Like, I don't know where it came from, but there it is. Uh, so uh, I realized, though, there's one place on Earth where there's no shame. Uh, that is a strip club that, uh, that is 
where that idea came from. And I was like, well, I can go there and maybe, I don't know, face my issues. Uh, but uh, yeah, and uh, I went and um, it took a couple of tries, but I was finally able uh, to ask for a private dance, which is weird. Uh, because if you've been keeping score, what that means is that what I could not ask is, let's dance the salsa. Uh, but I could ask what amounted to, please take off your clothes and grind upon my person. Um, I feel like that's a bigger ask, I don't know about you. Uh, and the difference there uh, is money was involved, and that's not crass or anything, but uh, but it's true. Like There was an exchange of money. Uh, that meant that to make it worth her while, I didn't have to like do anything like dance well or talk or, you know, uh, I just had to fork over cash and then like knock her over, right? Uh, and never did it get any good at salsa, but my not groping game is on point, so <laughs> figure that one out. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Luke Mauer, everybody. Let's give it up. Yay! Oh my goodness, you guys. Uh, hold on a couple of, have a good time. Have a good night, Linda. Uh, you know, uh, it's kind of funny Luke mentioned that Google and Facebook control everything. Luke, did you get up this morning and say, God, I think I'm going to agree with Ben Shapiro this afternoon on something? <laughs> it just seems like, it's a weird common ground. I mean, I mean, I mean, again, Zog is real, but it's just odd for you to note it like that. Especially, I mean, Ben Shapiro's kind of in trouble for putting it out there, you guys. Look up Zog. Don't do it. Do it on a Tor browser, though. Do it on a, uh, let's see. What else? You know what actually is kind of difficult for me about sex work? Uh, I'm not doing it or getting offered to do it. That's impossible. It's beyond difficult. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not going. I'm not going to give anybody any money. I don't have any money to give anybody. How do I treat a person who's basically panhandling me with the offer of sex to say this is panhandling to me at that point? How do I? How am I appropriately dismissive and be like, look, I acknowledge. You're having a hard time, but so is One Tooth Willie over here who wants a fucking cigarette. I don't have either of the things you guys want. And you don't have anything I really want that you really want to give me. Well, when I actually, One Tooth Willie, I think I got a shot. I actually think I got a, I, I definitely think I could buy sex off of One Tooth Willie a lot more easily than an actual, real professional union member sex worker. Uh, yeah. But you're going to get what you pay for. A, a cigarette from One Tooth, you know, a cigarette sex from One Tooth Willie is... I mean, it's a can opener on your junk, I think is pretty much, I think is pretty much what, you know, like, uh, okay. Too much? Oh, uh, here's a dating tip, you guys. Luke, you seem to have a problem with this one. I've, I've kind of got this one sort of figured out. Um, just hang out until they fuck everybody else. As long as you can remain inoffensive, which is actually the problem I have. Uh, but as long as you can just, like, just hang out, they'll fuck everybody else they know. And they're like, why well, did I fuck that guy? And you're there, and... Then you fuck them, and then it's, you know, or wait till they might be homeless, and if you've got an apartment. That's both those two things. I mean, I've had more success with the latter, I'm just saying. You guys, coming to the stage, who's coming to the stage? Coming to the stage is the next comedian that I am very glad to be bringing up here, Mr. Eric Sparks, everybody! Hey, Chris, what a, what a say on stage can't be used against me in a court of law, right? I mean, I'm not a lawyer, sure, go with that. It's like a doctor's office in here, yeah? If I accidentally admit to a couple felonies, that's just presumed to be for entertainment or something, yeah? Yes. Okay, cool. Just to be safe, you guys should probably assume that everything I say is made up for comedic purposes. I went out to lunch with my grandma yesterday. Did you like that transition? This is a true story. Uh, when I told her I'd been doing stand-up recently, she goes, oh, do you make people laugh? No, grandma. I bomb every time. <laughs> I think I must have a friendly face or something. I don't know. But people always just fucking talk to me, though. That's why I grow this beard. I'm trying to offset that a little bit. Then I have the jawline of a four-year-old. I think I'm probably the only person under 140 pounds that has two chins. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, one time I was, in, I was visiting uh, Reed College before I found out I'm not smart enough to go there. Then 20 minutes of getting there, this girl comes running up to me. She's like, oh, hey, it's you from the party last night. I'm like, no, sorry. That wasn't me. She goes, it was totally you. We were doing bong hits and snorting lines of coke. You remember? I'm like, look, I just got here. I drove here from Washington, over four hours away, today. 
And then she paused and frowned and squinted at me for like a really long time and goes like this. Oh, well, you do kind of look like everybody. <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? I kind of look like everybody, like objectively? That's not fucking true, but whatever. I think I probably need therapy. I mean, I definitely know I need therapy for that and for a lot of other shit, too. That's actually why I'm here. That's why I do stand-up. I can't afford a therapist, so just get on stage and get my shit out. <laughs> I recently moved to Eugene, you know, a couple hours south of here, and when I first got there, I noticed there's a lot of homeless people in Eugene, but there's also a strong turkey population. Is that weird to anybody else but me? Sometimes my brain makes these connections. You know, like I'm walking by a turkey and there's three homeless guys there. I'm like, yo, you're about to get jumped. <laughs> but the turkey never seems worried about it. I'm not actually sure there's a lot of pe homeless people in Eugene, though. When I first got there, I thought there was, but also everybody in Eugene dresses like they're homeless. <laughs> it's yeah. way harder than I thought to tell who actually sleeps with a roof over their head. It's easy to tell who does drugs, though. Fucking everybody. Everybody, everybody <laughs> in Oregon does drugs. It's only in Oregon when somebody says they're sober, it means they just smoke weed. Yeah, that's right. That's why you guys got a little scraggly little nug on the license plate, right? But that's a true story. How I thought of that joke about uh, everybody smoking weed in Oregon, I was smoking with this old lady the other day. She hits the joint twice. She goes, oh, shit. I said, what? She said, I'm late for AA. <laughs> <laughs> OK. You should probably go. I didn't want to keep her from her sobriety. <laughs> I'm really sorry about this. I have a policy of not apologizing about jokes beforehand, but I'm breaking that policy just for this one joke. I'm thinking about writing a book about my life. I'm going to call it, There's Blood on the Toilet Paper. <laughs> That's if you're wondering how my day is going. Is anybody else on their butthole period? Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry to hear that. Seems like a daily struggle for me as well. I like to get on Tinder sometimes, and whenever I'm on there and I see a girl with a kid in her pictures, I always swipe yes. And I don't even know why, really, I'm still trying to figure it out, but I think I'm just trying to fuck somebody's mom. I'm trying to knock that off my bucket list. Are there any mothers in the building? Just one? Okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody here ever done meth? I'll rephrase that. Has anybody else here ever done meth? <laughs> no? Just me. Fun. Well, has anybody here ever smoked pot? Woo! Woo! Yeah, see? You're, you're all supposed to go woo on that. This is Oregon. <laughs> I just made a joke about you all smoking weed. See, marijuana is not a gateway drug. It's just fucking not. And I mean, I would know. I used to be a meth addict. Not just any old meth addict. I was an IV user. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I know a little something about what leads to what, right? That's pretty much the end of the road. Marijuana doesn't lead to banning meth. Do you know how hard it is to shoot drugs when you're high on weed? It's not easy. It's like there's this voice in your head. It's like, I'm going to do what to get high? But I'm already high. I'm not doing that. And as you go to put the needle in, it's like, oh shit, it's going to hurt. Yeah, definitely smoke pot after you shoot your drugs. <laughs> and don't ever shoot drugs if you want some real advice on that. The other day I was telling that story, and uh, I asked if uh, anybody had ever done meth. And this woman was like, I did. I, I moved here to get clean from meth. It was like my entire desire to do comedy just left me. And I was just like, really? I moved here to get clean from meth, too. Like, how are you doing? And we just talked for, like, my whole set. And, was, and afterwards, she came up to me and was like, it really meant a lot that somebody just talked to me like that was normal. And it, like, it's such a trippy experience. I don't even have a joke to make right now. I'm just telling you guys about this crazy shit that happened to me the other day. I'll go back to stories, though. Uh, back when I was a meth addict, uh, I wasn't just a meth addict. I also was, like, really into shoplifting, heavily addicted to shoplifting. And I started in Seattle, just at like grocery stores, you know, taking candy bars or whatever, small shit like that. Is that my light? Is that what, is that what we're doing now? Yeah. Cool. Is that one minute or two? Less than one. Okay, perfect. Uh, so anyways, I got really into shoplifting. I was shoplifting from grocery stores and I wanted to do more. 
But I didn't have the confidence yet to start shoplifting from Nordstrom or big department stores like that. So I started shoplifting from Goodwill. Because, <laughs> you know, I figured nobody would give a fuck. <laughs> Seemed like a good place to practice. And really quickly it got to the point where I was going in every single day, filling up a fucking duffel bag with whatever I wanted, and just leaving. Nobody ever stopped me. <laughs> nobody ever said shit. So one day I'm in there, it's the same routine as always. I fill up my bag, I'm headed out the door, and I hear this voice like, Hey, punk, where do you think you're going with all that? This big, burly guy grabbed me by the arm. I'd never seen him before, but... He was wearing a Goodwill shirt, so I think they hired that motherfucker just to catch me. I kind of like fucked him off of me, and I threw the bag down on the ground. I started running down the street. He's, he was chasing me. I busted out of my flip-flops. I was so confident they wouldn't fuck with me. I wore flip-flops to go shoplifting. So just as I crossed the street, I hear a crash behind me, and the guy starts screaming like, ah! And I look back, and a fucking garbage truck had hit him. I call that the story of God's magic garbage truck. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, let's give it up for Eric Sparks Ooh. and his sweet pants. All right, so, you know, uh, stripping, I'm a stripper, and it is very therapeutic. We do a lot of work with people, and I'm pretty sure if therapists actually took their clothes off when they were doing their job, they'd probably have a higher success rate. <laughs> Um, the other day I was in the bathroom and I, I kind of thought of something, I was like, you know, lingering on the john with shit on your ass is no different than puking and not wiping your face off until you put your phone down. Uh, recently I decided that I was like, you know, I don't, I tap it on the whole weed thing, I'm done with it, my receptors are full. So I, I was like, what am I going to do with my fucking time? So I took up fucking local politics. Primarily Portland City commissioners. Commissioners. I fucking hate them. And the Portland Bureau of Transportation. Like, what the fuck is going on with our fucking infrastructure, dude? My apartment, I watch the fucking, like, Fremont Bridge of 405 every day. Because I like to watch people stuck in traffic. And I just sit there drinking my tea, I'm like, fuck, this is so fucked, I feel so bad for them. Like, I'm so glad I'm here right now. It's attitude of gratitude. And, uh... One of them said that their goal was to reduce traffic by 30%. Well, no, you're just fucking pissing drivers off by 100%. If you think that filling in all, filling in all the you know, extra lanes with bike lanes and greenways and whatnot is going to reduce traffic and then telling us like, oh, if you're stuck in traffic and you're upset, just remember you are the problem. It's like, like, what the fuck? Do you think that you just, like, you take away all the parking and make everybody hate driving more that we're just gonna, like, just teleport to where we need to go? That doesn't make this totally illogical. Uh, the other day, Portland Bureau of Transportation posted saying, you know, one of the trickiest driving maneuvers is getting safer in Portland is to turn left. I was like, what the fuck? You just took out lanes so people could figure out how to turn left? Like, they, they should know this. They got a fucking driver's license. And now we're pandering to these motherfuckers who can't turn left. Like, congratulations, guys. You guys, this bureau deserves some orange mocha frappuccinos. Like, I'm just grateful you're not teaching your children how to read good. Uh, Cornelius Pass comes, kind of sounds like a porno. So I, I was just putting it out there. If somebody wants to take that and run with it, I'd be willing to watch. All right, so up next we have Miss Maddie. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. I'll just take her. Hello. Wow. It's fucking lit. Okay. Um, let's see. So I just told my friend, I used to have the coolest buck teeth. And I didn't even get a say when my parents had them cut down. So I 100% get why you're mad you're circumcised. <laughs> Um, so whenever I see that sign, baby on board, my mouth starts watering, because now I'm thinking about charcuterie. <laughs> um, oh, there was one more beat. Oh yeah, so, uh, the other week at the bus stop, some kid said he was gonna kick my ass, uh, right after saying in front of his friends that actually, over the shirt doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, the concept of doing coke is bomb.
bonkers, right? We give up all our money for Coke, but then we need that money to actually do the Coke. It's as dumb as that ladyfish who gave up her voice to tell Prince Eric she wants him. Okay, oh, that joke is not working. <laughs> um, so I've decided that I'm going to let myself go because no one's going to care if I'm pretty when the robots take over, right? Like, can you imagine me primping myself during the robo-apocalypse, just trying to retain some normalcy in a world of chaos? Oh my god, I forgot the punchline. Oh! Trying to retain some normalcy in a world of chaos. Like when a mom and dad schedule sex. Okay, yeah. No, I like that joke. I just fucked it. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Oh, um, you know that thing when you're laying with your dog and you think, is it wrong I'm naked? <laughs> but then you realize you're being crazy. Because to fur babies, we're always naked. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, so uh, anyone in here a plant lover? Yeah. Yes. One of my plants is sick, and my friend said it helps to talk to your plant. Um, hard pass. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to get stuck in an infinite loop of, and again, I also love water. <sighs> If I could please get everyone's help for like this next bit, please. So um, everyone look to your left. Everyone look to your right. I have hemorrhoids. Yeah. And uh, I went to the hemorrhoid clinic and while the lady doctor was down there digging around, talking me through things, I did the cringiest thing ever. <laughs> I replied, okay, mom. <laughs> Which was so weird, because I call my mom Kelly. Um, I want to land on a, wow, 4.30. Wow, maybe I'll just do everything. Okay, so, um, uh, my grandma's like my best friend. We share everything from the bathroom to IBS. And uh, IBS stands for um, I be shitting. <laughs> and I want to be more like old people and how they don't care about anything. Like, no one's 97 and still washing their hands. <laughs> like my grandma. My grandma doesn't care. She keeps bringing me souvenirs from places she visited on vacations I wasn't invited on. And she should get an award for particularly bad souvenirs. Like, she went to the market in Tijuana and got me a Disney shirt on clearance. <laughs> She'll text me when she's traveling. Just letting you know I'm safe. Safe, you're in Canada. Like, their national tree makes candy. <laughs> um... I, uh, I just started, I recently started dating my boyfriend and tried something I've never tried before. Shaving a landing strip. And mine was a fucking disgrace. Like when they let elephants paint. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for laughs, I texted my friend a pig and she goes, dude, that's not a landing strip. You mowed a path right down the middle. <laughs> I'd never actually seen a landing strip before, and in my mind, you'd leave the grass everywhere but the runway. It looked like a meteor crashed in a field. <laughs> okay, last one, kittens. So, uh, I know my boyfriend's the one because our health problems combined are sexy. Mm -hmm. I have carpal tunnel in both hands, so I wear double wrist splints. And my boyfriend wears a CPAP mask. And sometimes we play Batgirl Bucks Bane. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Miss Maddie. Goodbye. Woo! Miss Maddie, everybody!
I want to first of all, let's just give it up. Let's just give it up for this audience. Uh, all two of you are making it sound like three people in here, and it is fucking incredible, you guys. Damn good stuff. Damn good stuff. Uh, keeping it going. You know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Trevor uh, mentioned, you know, like washing. I've, I've been a dishwasher at work before too, and it is really frustrating. The worst is when you get so good at a di as being a dishwasher that you get mad at other people for not being good dishwashers. Like, man, fucking Paul sucks at washing dishes. Like, what a shitty thing. That's like, that's like getting mad at people for not tying their shoes real good. You know what I mean? Uh, and I gotta say, we all, look, your employers are gonna keep treating you like shit, you guys. They're just gonna keep treating you like shit. I mean, uh, you know, Jamie's got the right idea. Don't have a job, first of all, smart lady. Uh, but I figured out why. Because if I wanna know why your employers are treating you like shit, it's because they figured out, and we should figure out too, they're weeding out all the people likely to come back and work with a gun in elementary school now. So, you know. That's what I'm saying, don't, school, don't have school shootings, have workplace shootings, and actually let's get some fucking change done, you guys. Uh, coming to the stage is a workplace shooting right to the face of my heart. I don't know, unscramble that, you guys. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. I love him a lot. Let's give it up for Mr. Robert Manel, everybody! What's up, people? Yeah! That's what I was hoping for! Wow, you look a lot like Reese Witherspoon. I just had to... Have you gotten that before? I have, once, so... Oh, really? Awesome. Like, right now? Yeah. Oh, okay, sweet. It was a first for everything. Um, I just had to say that. Nice to see you. Um, I hate Reese... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, everyone loves Reese Witherspoon. Um, yeah, but it's not about Reese Witherspoon tonight, guys. It's about me, you know? And I already forgot my first joke, so that's what's going on with me. But thanks to technology, thanks to eight little Asian kids that kill themselves, I got it right here. So, yeah, now I remember. <laughs> what's up, guys? Um, I know I don't have um, this look. I have garden gnomes. I know I don't necessarily look like I do, but that's like how my first joke starts, so I'm just gonna say that. Um, I have these really cool garden gnomes. Um, anybody else have garden gnomes? There's no sense of community in this room. Community in this room. I'm just grasping at straws to bring anybody together in any sense of the word. Does anyone would think they might want garden gnomes at one point? I got a head nod from Hell yeah, two head nods. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah, hell yeah. That was, that was the fucking most like cool like bro response I've ever heard. <laughs> Fuck it, yeah, dude, garden gnomes all the way, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I just want to like like do drugs with that guy. Um, I have these really cool garden gnomes. Uh, they actually move and talk. Um, you can get them at Walmart. They're called Lost Children. So that's fun. <laughs> One of them has this really cool feature, uh, if you press his belly button, he'll shit his pants. Thank you. Um, <laughs> smiles work too, so yeah, thank you. Um, and they actually, they all have this really cool feature that um, if you yell at them loud enough, they'll clean up the dog poop on your front lawn. So, um, alright, I think it's time to move on. Um, yeah, don't call it cops, I feed them and shit, so. It's all good. Well, how, how have you guys, how has your guys' night been? Okay? I was like, literally, there's just like, there's mis there's like one person missing in the middle that would just like fucking like string everyone together and like a, you know, everyone would be like, they would feel like a sense of unity if there's just one person sitting. Ma'am, sir, would you care to sit right where the... The fucking, where the Star Wars ship is, <laughs> will blind you probably. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a plain bit, guys. You'll see, you'll see the punchline in a minute. Um, it all makes sense at the end. I might forget it, but, um, <laughs> Forgive me, guys, if I'm coming off like a little tired right now. Um, I just got a personal trainer. 
Yeah, I had to drag him home from LA Fitness. So, um, <laughs> yeah, good news, I live in my truck, so I need to drag him like a block. Bad news is, uh, my truck had a gas leak, so I had to push it here with a fucking personal trainer. In it. Yeah. Good news is, I had a homeless lady helping me the whole time. Bad news is, she wanted something in return. <laughs> good news is, I had a condom. Bad news is, it was expired. <laughs> Good news is, homeless ladies can't read. Bad news is, it broke during the act. Good news is, this guy was there to film it. <laughs> Fucking, I'm so thankful I could... No, that wasn't actually... See, I told you it would come back, didn't I? No, um... Yeah, where was I? Bad news? Kind of broke, guys, when I was having sex with a homeless lady. Good news is, there's no way that kid's gonna live. So, um... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad someone laughed at that, because otherwise, otherwise it might come off as, like, a plan or something. I don't know. I think I'm just missing my childhood. Anybody else? Missing childhood a little bit? Yeah. Me too. I recently picked up skating to kind of, like, reconnect with my youth, you know, feelings, and um, trying to get better. Um, like, uh, so last week... What I did is I found the best skater at my local skate park, and I tried to copy his movements the best I could, you know? And um, it's working. Like, now I can ollie. Um, I can buy ass a plant pantry. <laughs> and I can 69 standing up. So, um, that's good. That joke is called Mad Skills, Mad Restraining Orders. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Sometimes I get the feeling that, like, some people are considering, like, calling the cops after I get off stage. 1.30, alright. Yeah. It was youth. That was the subject. Do you guys remember, uh, Dragon Tales? Did you guys watch that? Hell yeah, it wasn't, yeah. Yeah? Dragon Tales? Really? Oh, this dude's way too cool for Dragon Tales. Sorry. He's like, dude, like, fucking, maybe I'll consider garden gnomes when I'm 40, dude, but no dragon tails, dude. Not for me. No, I don't remember anything past the intro song. Because uh, that's when my dad called me a pussy and switched it to 60 minutes. So, um, yeah. One day I finally stood up for myself after this went on for, like, a few years, and I said, Dad, is that really how you treat a child? And I'll never forget uh, his response. He said, Robert... You're 25, <laughs> and where are my pain pills? And I said, turn Dragon Tales back on, and I'll tell you. <laughs> and that night, me and my dad watched Dragon Tales high as fuck, guys. And we've been bros ever since. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hell yeah! <laughs> sure, why not? We'll leave it there. Thank you. Oh, no handshake? Yeah, yeah, what? You can't read the elbows. Okay, sweaty. Sorry. I'm always sweaty. Stink bugs stink, so stay the fuck away from them. So if fires stunk like shit, we probably wouldn't need fire detectors. Cause <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I will sleep through any sound, but if there's like a nasty smell emanating, I will wake up like that. Just right out of the bed, ready to go. Right. Where was I going with this? Oh, so earlier... One of the gentlemen, was it uh, Tatone, was talking about the Asian bomb gun, which one of my friends who was living in Thailand for a while was just explained this to me the other night. And he was saying, you know, looking around at me, he's like, everybody here probably has a dirty asshole because they just wipe with something dry. It's like, that is a fact. Um, and I was like, I don't think I'd ever really want to use a bidet because, like, I'm, I'm there to get stuff out of my body and not put stuff back in my body. But if Dyson teamed up with some day, I would definitely be open to that. All right, up next, we have a very fun, funny gentleman from LA. His name is Mario Rodriguez. Let's give it up. Oh. Harder, people, harder, harder. Yeah. Hey, 
Give it up one more time for your host, please. Make any sort of noise you want. Does it matter? I also agree that uh, we need to figure out a better way to clean our ass, right? You know what I mean? I think we should, if we called bidets ass baths, Americans would like them. You know what I mean? Just because they're called bidets, it's so whack. You know? Where's the camera at? You hear this? Just kidding. Hello, ma'am, are you a comedian? Are you a comedian? Uh, not very good at it. Oh, you're a comedian. Yeah, you're fine. You know, open mics, comedy is kind of like sex. You gotta do it a couple times and bomb before you're good at it. You know okay. what I mean? And, you know, as you can see, women mostly don't come, you know? <laughs> Let's see. That's, you know, it's, it's, it's weird now because it's just like us here, you know? Really, we could just be in a garage just talking to each other, but we have fucking probably the best gear in town, honestly. You guys want to do jokes? We'll do jokes. Fine. I was at a park, and a dog ran up to me and tried to bite me. So, uh, I beat the shit out of it. <laughs> beat the fuck out of that shit. Then the owner came up. The owner was mad, started talking shit. So, had to beat the fuck out of him too, man. <laughs> beat the fuck. And the owner's mom comes up. No, She's mad. She's yelling, right? And then, uh, guess what I do, dog? I apologize. That's right, I apologize. Because violence isn't the answer. <sighs> so I have a stepson now. And uh, the best thing about being a father is that father love bond, right? right? And if they don't give you that, just beat the shit out of them, right, dude? Right? <laughs> See, I love Chris's mic because I can do all the jokes. Like I, I, you know, have I've been I don't do. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a chill dude. I'm gonna do another one. I'm a chill dude. Uh. But everyone asks, like, why millennials have depression, right? When it, like, they act like 9-11 wasn't shoved down our throats as kids. You know what I mean? Like, they said, never forget, now we can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, we grew up during the biggest recession in history, you know? Like, what does it do for self-confidence? For self-confidence, when things that are too big to fail, fail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now we got social media, and it's like a handheld reminder that you're not as hot as you think. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, you're like, damn, I look good today, man. Nope, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> Back to being ugly. Yeah. Yeah? Oh, shit. I got a notification. Just overdrew my bank account. Now Jay-Z thinks I'm a virgin. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Depressed. I don't know. I've never figured it out. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, famous Mexican performers, and the first thing I thought, the first person that comes up is Selena. You guys know who Selena is? You guys know who Selena? Not Selena Gomez. Not Selena Gomez. Oh, yeah, see, Giorgio. <laughs> Fuck Wizards of Waverly Place. Selena was like Bruja of uh, Boyle Heights. You know what I'm saying? But like, she was like, every Mexican person loved her. I, let me put it this way. My grandma cried so hard, and for so long when she died, I thought we were related to her. You know what I mean? I was like, we had a famous cousin this whole time, you know what Tony John? I bet she would have bought me a PlayStation. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't want to do this joke anymore either. Yeah, energy, no, energy no, checks no, no. out. See, you guys are the judge here. See, that's the greatest thing about comedy. The crowd judges, right, George? Yes. Give me some. Ugh. Fuck wow. yeah. What else you guys want? Fuck, fuck having a beer with your president. I want a president I can do some coke with, right, George? Woo! Hell yeah. <laughs> I want to vote for a president that's going to cram into a bathroom stall and do a bump off my mom's house key. You know what I'm saying, dude? <laughs> you know why? Because if you do coke long enough with someone, they'll tell you all the secrets they know. <laughs> You get a fucking half gram in that motherfucker, they'll be like, okay, fucking Atlantis is real, dog. <laughs> 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 
JFK was killed by Joe DiMaggio. Okay, who knows this? That shit's real, dude. That shit's real, dude. Joe DiMaggio was like, hey, I got a bunch of monsters that love me. Dog, don't fuck with me. Yeah, man. You know what? I'm just going to notebook because fuck it. I got real high today. I'm at a point. <laughs> fuck yeah. I'm at a point in my life where I have a loaf of bread in my car. But I don't know if that loaf of bread has mold or not. But I still eat it. That's, a, that's where I am in life right now. I'm playing like Russian roulette with yeast. <laughs> It's like dating all over again. Oh, yes. There we go. You ever see someone so attractive, you fucking can't look at them? <laughs> it's like, God, go away. <laughs> like, why do you exist? You should have a license to be that attractive. Know your power. Have a fucking... <laughs> Same vein, right? You ever meet someone where you wish you didn't know English? <laughs> like, I wish I was fucking raising a hole because this would be just noise to me right now. <laughs> no? Okay. I need to stay out of Pal's bookstore. All right. Okay. I like this one, too. I'm from LA. We're going to have the Olympics in 2028. It's going to cost a lot of money, but to save money, we're going to use homeless people as hurdles. <laughs> yeah. Another LA Olympic test. Nah, I don't want to do that shit either. Again, audience is the keeper of the stones. You know what I mean? Don't know what that means. I'm sorry. If you learn anything from me, is that women don't have to have an orgasm to get pregnant. <laughs> if you, if it, when I leave Portland, if you remember any joke of mine, remember that women don't have to have an orgasm to get pregnant. This would be Earth if women had to have an orgasm to get pregnant. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, host. Thank you, all of you. Sorry. Yeah. Woo! Mario Rodriguez, everybody! Do you guys see him trying to get applause for smoking weed? This is fucking Portland, dude. We don't give applause for just weed smoking anymore. You know, like it. Invent a new kind of weed or some shit like that. I ate a thousand milligrams. This weed, I'm hiding it. This is Portland, man. It's like saying, ah, I drank beer with a lot of hops in it this afternoon, you guys. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. You guys, I get up in the morning every day. I kind of do the same thing. I was reading the news this morning. And it was a little bit shocking to read that Joe Button has been accused of groping another woman. And apparently that Joe Button was a segregationist. And then I was like, oh, my glasses aren't on. Apparently that's Joe Biden, you guys. I did not need to tune into Sway to find out what was going on in the Breakfast Club. But Joe Biden, that's right, I'm 50 years old. I make youth culture references. Deal with it, motherfuckers. Real housewives, goddammit. Coming to the stage. <laughs> Joe Biden's just as old as I am. That's a fucked up thing. Like, rap is not a young reference. Like, the fucking people who invented it are my dad's age at this point, you guys. Coming to the stage is another one of my comedy babies and another one I have yet to molest. I do put the word yet in there. I gotta say, by the way, and I'm just gonna, this is a public service announcement. If you are a single, young, disease-free, or let's say you have one of the friendlier diseases, and uh, you're looking to maybe get a little strange, well, George has hinted multiple times that he has a really weird-shaped dick. So I would say that meets the definition of strange. Also, if you don't count pillows... He's a virgin, so let's give it up for Mr. George Rosenbaum, everybody! Hey, everybody, how you doing tonight? I'll take herpes, I don't mind. Yeah, so uh, I've been looking at the news, uh, too, and uh, a really disturbing report about, like, U.S.-Iran sanctions came out. Uh, the president of Iran, in response to some of these U.S. sanctions, uh, came out and uh, said that uh, the entire White House staff is afflicted with mental retardation. And uh, don't laugh, this is serious. And uh, I think that it's important for uh, the people of Iran to come together in solidarity and uh, say to each other, BOOM! Oh shit, he called the president retarded! Steel beams like this? Fire shit! Really? 
This isn't... <laughs> like, even in the third person, this word is not okay. Clap if you know what third person even means. That's not a lot of claps. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, I'm definitely a virgin, and uh, I hate it when people who are in relationships come to me for advice, uh, because that seems to be the only time that I ever learn about relationships or other people's is when they come to me for advice, like I'm magically qualified. You, I mean, before you had a chance to like date me, and 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 it's like, ah, oh, no, you're not ready. But now that you're fucking up in your relationship, suddenly I am ready. Is that how it works? I hate it with especially poly relationships, because I haven't even had mono yet. <laughs> there we go. Oh, God. Um, so, uh, the first time I masturbated, nothing came out. <laughs> Am I the only one who's ever experienced, like, the f yeah, the, for some dudes, it just takes a couple of years for the actual ability to ejaculate to kick in. Uh, I didn't actually get, I didn't get to ejaculate until, uh, I was at my grandma's house, and me and my brother and my grandma were all sleeping in, in the same bed together, and it was like two or three in the morning, and, uh, I, I do the thing that I don't even know is masturbation yet, and tonight is the night that my balls activate. Don't worry, though, I don't, I don't come on my grandma at all. I didn't, I'm a good boy, I don't come on my grandma. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, are we even, uh, this, this got, like, thunderous, uh, eardrum puncturing applause in, like, the room around the corner over there. Like, I told this exact same story, and everybody was dying. And in here, uh, nobody gives a shit. I, I can't, I can't articulate how much no one cares about anything in this room. I don't know. It, I, I don't know if it's if it's because we're at the end of the list, or if people are scared about the scared about these pieces of tape on the floor that seem to be some sort of cue for like bank robbers to come in here and steal like the seven dollars and a quarter that is in the cash register. Or maybe it's the, uh, the the plastic plants with the Christmas lights. Okay, uh, people have probably already made fun of this room. I'm very I'm, I know that I'm very late to this party. Uh, I'm very happy with the uh, the umbrella lights in here that uh, that bring back fond memories of preparing for a children's photo where my parents forced me to carry a comb in my pocket because they were dicks. <laughs> yeah, uh, my my parents are. Are not good. Not, well, my dad is not good people. Um, one time, he uh, told me he told me and my brother that the dog was hit by a car, which was a lie, because we left the front door unlocked, and he thought that lying to us about uh, a dead dog and us being responsible for that dead dog would teach us a lesson about home security. And all it really taught me was that I'd never be secure in that home. Like my, dad, my dad's an ass. Like my dad is like weirdly responsible, and then at other times weirdly childish. Like uh, when my brother was filling out his FAFSA paperwork for his first choice university that he got accepted into, my dad didn't like want to sign the paperwork because he was frustrated with the process. So my brother had to forge his signature. Uh, and then there was this like other time when I got accepted into uh, my university, and me, my dad, and the dean of the university that I was accepted into or sitting together at the same table. And my dad takes this magic opportunity to say to the dean of this college, hey, listen, uh, this is my son. I know he went to a school for children with mental disorders, but if you put math problems in front of him, he's really good at it. And I was hurt by that, but also confused because my dad was saying this really important, this really like in poor taste, inappropriate thing in front of this very important man, and it made me wonder if my dad was the one with autism instead. <laughs> yeah, um, I got a haircut. 
And I'm happy with this hair uh, with this haircut. It does kind of make me look like a uh, lesbian Jim Carrey, <laughs> or like um, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know a, a little bit Hitlery, which is a problem because I'm Jewish. <laughs> can you can you imagine like owing money to Hitler if you're a Jew? That has to be the best feeling in the world. You got Hitler. Make a pay. I'm gonna make weird interest rules rates and stuff. I don't know, there's like three people in here. I'm sorry, four. You count as a person. Hi. There's 20 seconds on this clock. I've been George Rosenbaum. Thank you and take care. All right, let's give it for George again. Thank you. Your thighs look great in those jeans, by the Ooh, way. Thank you. <laughs> All right, um, do you guys pray? definitely my crap. Um, I only pray to Jesus when I'm at work. Primarily I'm like, dear Jesus, why do guys call out your name instead of mine? I don't even know you. And every time I start a lap dance, they call them out. I'm like, what the fuck? Are we at church? Like, we're in the devil's den, dude. Get it together. So, do you uh, guys want to hear a little bit about 4th of July or uh, got your nose? No? All right, strong crowd here. Um, so I wasn't always an amazing stripper. I had to start out the day shifts like everybody else. I didn't suck my boss's dick. Um, working in the day shifts is kind of like waiting around to win the lottery, but you don't get to play. So the end of the shift comes and I'm like, get me the fuck out of here. I'm done doing laps around this empty room, and uh, I get called up on stage. I'm like, sweet, there's nobody here. I don't gotta do shit. I'm just gonna stand here, watch time go by. Gentlemen decides to sit down at the end of the catwalk, which is pretty much like the first away you could be from me and still have to pay. And uh, kind of nice focus in. I was like, oh, it's fucking my friend Jay. Cool. So Jay is a very, very kind, special soul. Um, he has very limited vision, only sees out of the peripheral of one of his eyes. So I get real close, real close, and I'm like, hey, how's it going? How's your day? Good to see you. Yada, yada. And I was like, all right, Jay, I'm going to put my boobs in your face. I don't want to scare the guy. I don't know what he's looking at. <laughs> and I was like, give him the whole, like, one, two. And I pull away. He's got this nice little smile on his face. Like, oh, well, thank you, Odessa. And I'm like, oh, fuck. He's like, Jay, Jay, you dropped something. He's like, oh, you dropped something, Odessa? And he starts, like, looking around the floor. I don't even, I mean, like, feeling around on the floor. And I was like, no, 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 no. I didn't drop anything. Like, you, I think you dropped something. Like, you dropped, you dropped something, Jay. I, I, I got your nose, Jay. And he's like, oh, oh. So we're both looking down the floor for his fucking nose. Prosthetic nose, people. Uh, my ass is in the air. I'm fully naked. At that point, another customer decides to come in and sit down at the stage right directly behind my ass, of course. I'm stressing out. I try to get a hold of the DJ. I wave my hand with one hand up, one hand down the floor. I'm like, dude, please, hey, we need some help over here. Right at the last moment, Jay pops up. He's like, I got my nose. He's like, slaps it right on. <laughs> and uh, I had all the blood drained out of my body. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to do something I've never done. I'm going to gather up my few dollar bills I clearly did not deserve and just walk off stage. So with that, I'm going to introduce Crystal Moore from Boise, Idaho. Let's give it up, please, everybody. <laughs> Let's just start this off real awkward for everyone. There we go. That's nice. You guys have lots of confidence in me now. I, uh, is George, is George listening? Because I actually, I wrote a children's book that I think uh, would be beneficial to George. Uh, it's the sex education rhyme we all deserve. Okay? It's called Other Places You'll Home. Okay, do you hear the influence? Congratulations, ho. Today is your day. You're off to lewd places. You're getting laid. 
You have brains in your head, you have cum in your balls. You can steer yourself any direction that calls. You're on your own, and you know what tricks you know. And you or the bitch will decide where to hoe. <laughs> You'll look up and down dicks, look them over with care. About some you will say, oh, I don't choose to hoe there. With your head full of brains and your pussy full of prowess, you're too smart to hoe down any not so good fellas. And you may not find any you want to hoe down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's no bullshit out there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen and frequently do to people as ballsy and frisky as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew, just hoe right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll help. You'll be on your way up. You'll be having hot nights. You'll bone the high gangsters who pimp in red lines. You won't choke on dick, because you can't even gag. You'll swallow it whole, because you're that kind of fat. Where, wherever you hoe, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you hoe, you'll top all the rest. Except when you don't because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true. Fuck-ups can happen to you. You can get all caught up in a prick-filled cage. <laughs> Your hose will fuck off. You'll be left in a rage. You'll come down from that rage with a heartbreaking bump. And the chances are then that you in a slump. <laughs> and when you hoe in a slump, you ain't in for much fun. Unslumping yourself ain't easily done. You'll come in places where the sheets are unwashed. Some peckers are wrapped, but mostly they're not. Places you could sprain both your hymen and chin. Do you dare to pull out? Do you dare to thrust in? How much could you lose? How much could you win? And if you hoeing, should you swallow or spit? Or catch it on your face. Or maybe on your tip. Mm -hmm. Or hoe around back and sneak in from behind. Simple it ain't, simple it ain't, I'm afraid you will find for a pussy with power to make up its mind. You can get so repressed that you'll hoe in disgrace. Down long darkened alleys at a break dick pace. And grind on an old man's unshaven face. Headed, I fear, toward a most unsavory place. The waiting place. For sluts just waiting. Waiting for a chance to hoe, or a cock to come, or a load to blow. Or the love to come, and the shame to go. Or a wedding ring for the okay to hoe. Everyone is just waiting. Waiting perhaps for their Bishop Blake. For a lot of shame and unforeseen attraction to much older men. I mean, a string of pearls or a pair of tits. A uh, bush of curls with multiple clips? Everyone's just waiting. No, ho. That shit ain't for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the hot parties where the pretty hoes playing. With titties flip flapping, once more you'll ride high. Ready for any peen under the sky. Ready because you're that kind of guy. Oh, the places you'll hoe. There's fun to be done. There's no points to be scored, no games to be won, but the magical things you can do with your puss <laughs> will make you a shameless object of lust. Meat! You'll be fresh meat as fresh meat can be, with a whole wide world of genitals for you to see. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm thrilled to say sometimes you'll hold lonely games too. Games you must win, because you're playing with yourself, dipshit. <laughs> All alone, whether you like it or not, alone ought to be something you hoe quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll have fantasies that scare you right out of your pants. There are some so bizarre, so depraved, bizarre and unreal, they'll scare you so bad you won't know how to deal. But on you will hoe. Though the bitches in the back be casting shade. On you will hoe. Though the righteous assault with shame. On you will hoe. Bitch, you gotta get paid. 
Onward up many a slippery pole, though your arms may get sore, your pussy gets pulled. On and on you will hoe, and I know you'll hoe far, and face up to your sex, whatever you are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know, with many strange birds as you hoe. So be sure when you fuck, fuck with care and great tact, and remember that hoeing's a great balancing act. <laughs> Just never forget to be dexterous with your cunt and never mix up the back with the front. <laughs> but will you be damned for being the hoe? There are some things that only God knows, but there is no God so nobody knows. So be your name Stormy or Stella or Faye Samantha Saint, Tommy, or George Payne. <laughs> you're off to loot places, and you're getting paid. You're mounting life's phallus, so ho unashamed. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Crystal Moore, everybody! So you said, really old, how old? Never mind. Uh, I actually, uh, you know, my name's Chris, and I am a codependent. I am uh, 14 months sober. And that's right, you shouldn't have. It's, all that just means is that, you know, I don't get laid and I have meetings about it. Uh, <laughs> people think codependent's not a real addiction. It doesn't get treated with a lot of respect. Uh, but I, I ask you, what are the hallmarks of classic addiction? Uh, is it financial instability? Are these the teeth of somebody who's had dental care at a job? I want to say no. Uh, what about, uh, you know, the big one, the big addiction uh, indicator, you guys? I think we all know about it. Uh, Chris Rock gave us a good example of it. You know, it keeps calling me, you guys. Fucking gross people on the streets to get your fix, right? And they say, well, that's, you're not a codependent because you don't fuck gross people on the streets to get your fix. What you don't realize is we put them on the lease. Fucking gross people are the fix. They get a key, you move them in. It's fucking great, you guys. Uh... <laughs> We don't have, by the way, if you ever have an experience with sobriety, and I'm not asking you to violate, uh, you know, anonymity, uh, because God forbid you have to come up with a, a fucking another first name and then, you know, go three blocks over to some other shitty church. Uh, <laughs> she's been to a meeting. You guys, uh, they have a ninth step. It's called reconciliation in most 12-step programs. Uh, codependents do not have a ninth step, you guys. That is a, not a good idea at all. Uh, I, I actually signed up for a CODA meeting, uh, Northwest uh, 21st, and uh, I didn't go because the, 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 the letter I got back from the guy who leads the meeting seemed a little bit too excited to have me there. And I was like, you know, no, no, no. I'll catch an SA meeting, you know. Let's go to a Sex Addicts Anonymous meeting. Uh, just feel like if I'm in a relapse, let's go for a sure thing, you know? <laughs> Speaking of sure things, you guys, coming to the stage is one of my favorite sure things in town. We talk about the hot box, but he's got one of the hottest boxes around. <laughs> let's give it up for Mr. Brett Baker, everybody! Oh, I did not know that they even called what I have a box. I, I need to relearn my terminology, I guess. Um, People tell me that I get on stage because I'm an, att I'm an attention whore. Unless I'm getting paid, I'm an attention slut. <laughs> get our terminology right. It is only after years of hard work that I sometimes have the right to say to a room full of people, yes, spend your hard-earned money for the privilege of putting your attention all over my face. Well, let's see, is, uh, do, do they, like, still spank babies when they're born and they can breathe? Is that a thing? Did it used to be a thing? Because I just think, like, if I were spanked, like, my first experience out of the womb was being attacked by someone five times my size. That would explain my irrational fear of being ambushed by a giant. Huh. Um, I'm so vulnerable to peer pressure, my cat talked me into doing catnip. <laughs> well, he didn't talk me into it. He held, he held out a paw and said, would you like some? <laughs> I said, when did you learn how to talk? He said, I didn't. I'm just thinking loud. Yeah. It's really 
does your faith in an ordered cosmos when your cat does catnip and you hallucinate? I worry that all chicken embryos are going to hatch into a meaningless existence in an indifferent universe. I'm an existentialist. <laughs> Only one person slapped his forehead? All right. That's good for that one. Um, I had high hopes for the, for the final season of Game of Thrones. Like, I'm, such, I'm such a book nerd, okay? Like, my brother caught me reading a, a prequel comic book for the books Game of Thrones is based on. He goes, oh, Brett, you're such a dweeb. And I go, yeah, well, you're as dickless as Theon Greyjoy in episode 7, season 3. <laughs> yeah, um, so, so uh, in the family, well, I, I guess what I liked about the books is how the characters became deeper and more intelligent as they adjusted to extremely trying circumstances. <laughs> Where in the show, they just become really stupid to advance the plot. Uh, that was a major difference. And also, like, the thing I, I'm such a book nerd, like, like in, Ar in Arya's one sex scene, all I can think is, oh, in the book, she's still 11. Uh, um, those, those religions are, like, like, they have a certain mythopoetic power. Like, I'm amazed people are not carving faces in trees and worshipping them. Or... Or burning little girls to change the weather. Or well, okay, that would be extreme. But uh, actually, in fact, that whole religion sucks. Now that I think about it, everyone who follows the fire guy dies a horrible death after betraying everyone, that, everything they believe in. Never mind. Um, and th and I've been riffing on this for too long. So, uh, can you imagine if Scientology had been written, had invented by a good writer? <laughs> We would all be praying to Gandalf to save us from Sauron. Uh, let's see. You, you ever, uh, you ever just blurt out some some random thing that came into your head and realized the sexist brain fart? Like you say, hey, I wonder if it's possible possible to be happy in a harem. And you said it to a radical feminist and professional dominatrix who says, "Sure, but you're not hot enough. Sure, but you're not hot enough to be in mine." <laughs> uh, so Boeing has uh, is having trouble selling 737s because they keep falling out of the sky. Death uh, prison uh, prisons are having trouble executing death row inmates because lethal injections are not as humane as we thought they were. So let's fly death row inmates around on 737s. <laughs> Boeing of the 737. Fly with us long enough and you'll be in heaven. <laughs> Boeing of the 737. Our motto is whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Boeing on the 737. It's the other death row. <laughs> um, as a public service, I would like to demonstrate the one socially acceptable kind of cat call. Hello, Mr. Whiskers. Garfield would like to speak to you. Um, every now and then, I'd like to pause and note the passing of Joseph Nicolosi, one of the founders of gay conversion therapy. Don't anyone feel sorry for him? Rotting the grave is just an afterlife style choice. Uh, what's that say here? Uh, so am I a bisexual if I only have sex by paying for it? <laughs> Hoping I'm not as white bread as I sometimes were. Uh, uh, so, you know, I don't understand why guys say, I crush pussy. Like, crush and pussy should never be in the same sentence as far as I'm concerned. I mean, okay, look, say if I saw a massively steroided out Eastern European athlete going, I crush the penis, I would not date her. I think we need to pay more attention to how we say things. Um, 
so let's see. So, so, so guys, you ever wish there were like just a magic door that you could open and behind it would be the woman of your dreams? You ever have that thought and walk by a lady's restroom? Anyone ever been stoned enough to see if it was a magic door? <laughs> okay, that'll do. Like, I got a chuckle. That's good enough to end on this kind of a night. Thank you, Brett. All right, has anyone here worked in the service industry? Yeah. Okay, one couple go. All right, good. Sweet. I think um, part of high school graduation is everybody should have to fucking do like a year in the service industry. Like, yeah. Seriously, um, I'm talking like one full year, all the fucking holidays, time served. Uh, one of my favorite places that I worked at, I had a memorable experience. Um, dinner shift opened up, we opened the doors. This is in Seaside, Oregon. Usually gay people are smart enough to go to Cannon Beach, but that day two lovely gentlemen came in and sat in my section. So I was fucking around, dicking around in the back, probably stoned as shit. So I just walk up, and I was like, hello, gentlemen, my name's Amelia. I'll be your server this evening. Here are your drink and beverage menus. Uh, our special tonight was semen chowder, but we sold out. It was supposed to be seafood chowder. Uh, I just stood there. I didn't know what to do. They kindly declined, as they should have. Um, yeah, there's no coming back. That. But you know who is coming back? It's Malik. Let's give him some love. All right, more people. Come on, more love, more love. Here we go. Hey, what's happening? Let me sit down in this chair. This chair been looking real good to me. I, I done drank too much tonight. I promised myself I wasn't gonna drink as much. I stopped buying bottles for my house because every time I do, I wake up in my neighbor's house covered in flour and cereal, <laughs> wondering how the fuck I got there. Now recently. I moved from the south to come up here, and I, I paint airplanes for Boeing that falls out the sky. And on that note, I've been thinking about uh, taking a vacation real soon. You know, soon, like four or five years when I get my shit together. I've been really thinking about it. I've been planning it. I'm thinking that's enough time because my mom was talking about going to the Dominican Republic, and people over there have been getting fucked up. You been hearing about it? No? Yeah? People been drinking out the many boys getting fucked up. Just falling out, having cardiac arrest. You know what I mean, one or two out of a hundred, that's cool, but five or six out of all the people that came in, that ain't no coincidence, you know what I mean? I heard about one lady opened a door and they said she fell down some stairs and went no stairs, about 200 feet from there. She opened that door and went to straight Dominican Republic ass whooping. They weren't just playing baseball, they was beating her up and down. I said, good thing I ain't got my shit together. I can wait on this. <laughs> I could ask women any day. I just call my mom. She come up here and be mad. Now look, I, I, I work at a place. It's just boring to watch a paint dry because that's the fuck I do. So we got a lot of downtime, and during this downtime, me and a bunch of other people had nothing to It was me and this little guy we call the Cabalito. Anybody know what a Cabalito is? No, that's a tiny horse. Because his manager is. The caballo, the big horse, and they ain't nothing but four foot nothing anyway. So we under there, and he's talking shit. He's like, hey, this lady here, she beat you in soccer. I was like, look at me, I'm a large black man that smokes cigarettes. Of course she gonna beat my ass in soccer, motherfucker. And she was like, I didn't play any soccer. So I'm like, hey, I get the thing, I get the thing. Then my son from Nigeria comes up. He's really from Nigeria. He came up and said, you mother sucker. She beat your ass in the soccer. And I was like, man, don't lie to me. Don't your mama, don't lie to me. Now, at this point, the Cabalito loses his mind. No one talks about mama! I'm like, look here. Look here, I understand you wouldn't talk about your mother unless you slim shady. You got some skeletons in the class, you're like, yeah, I'm sorry, mama. Tonight you're getting that ass chewed out on stage. <laughs> but I was thinking about it, it's like, to you, it's your mama, but to someone else, let's say your father, he's like, like, that motherfucking bitch. You know, at least once or twice, like, come downstairs and get your waffles. Yeah, bitch, tell them goodness fucking waffles. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go to work. 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I say bitch a lot. I don't know a uh, person told me, he's like, look, you got to stop saying bitch so much. And I was like, bitch, please. I, I wish me and Too Short could get together. I'd love to have a conversation with him. Of course, you know, because what's his favorite word? No one? You didn't want to know what Too Short's favorite word is? I just said that a thousand times. Bitch, come on now. God! <laughs> Alright, so I told you I ain't from around here. Somebody told me that this you know, you go date, you see ladies, you know, you holler at them, you're like, hey baby, what you doing? I wanna be with you and only you, baby. And my friend told me he was like, that's open, ethical, polyamorous relationships. And I said, where the hell does ethics come into you fucking other people? He was like, well, you know, uh, you can tell her, hey, I'm fucking this person. It should be all good. And I was like, so what happens if I just fuck the person without it? Where's the ethics coming to this? This is the business of making babies, right? That's what, I don't, I don't like government and shit, but this is the business of making babies. We get together, what's the tax break? Ain't shit. I decided to be with you because I can put up with the same rerun every day. Mm-hmm. That's what... Dating is just like, it's a lesson of the evil. It's easier to fight someone that you know, the enemy you know, than to wake up every day and say, I wonder what's on today. Man, it's the sci-fi channel, it's the horror fucking creature. She gonna get up and stab me. At least with this person, I know every day she gonna be mad at me. It's like, like, oh shit, well at least I can put up with this for another 20 years until I'm in the ground. God damn it. (laughs) Alright, (laughs) alright. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing written down. I should have came in with a phone or something so I could get on you. You looking so mad at me? <laughs> Bless the truth. <laughs> All right. Any of y'all got nicknames in here? Any nicknames? Jorge. Jorge. <laughs> really? Yeah. In San Antonio, they call me Jorge. Jorge. Yeah. Spanish for George. <laughs> All the time, really. God damn it! All right. They call me a lot of things too. You probably heard of them. I, I, haven't, told you, I haven't told you my name. You know, no, I'm, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you go. It's like they call me Malik, Gangry, Kill Ams, King Carulo, Young Skinny, Young Fat Sub, D for all of the above, motherfucker. But more importantly, <laughs> they call me Iceberg. Bird. You know what? Jorge. You know what? Jorge. Yeah. Why? The hair. No, motherfucker, they call me Iceberg, not because I have the deepest, most philosophical conversation that make you question everything in your life. Because I get Gucci man, white boy, wasted, motherfucker. God damn it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you the short version. It's like, it, it, where I'm from, there's a Laotian New Year, and every year it's on Easter Sunday. You know what Easter Sunday, the second coming of the king, but they don't celebrate the second coming of the king. They celebrate the second coming of Hennessy, baby, and I love that shit. They stack cases as tall as I am, and boy, I ain't playing. I went up in there and see people gamble their houses away for these cases, motherfucker. But the whole thing is, like, here, here's a bottle. You take a bottle, and you make everyone as fucked up as you is. <laughs> I took it to heart and just drank two bits, a box of wine, and God knows what else. I butt ass naked next to a cop 30 minutes later. I spur! I spur! <laughs> Looking at my friends like, you gonna get this big black son of a bitch? But naked, I ain't touching this ball sweat and shit. What the fuck is this? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, my name Malik. I hope you enjoyed my time, baby. Keep it going for Malik, everybody! Hey. I only call you Iceberg because of uh, the profound teachings of uh, the poet and street knowledge mag- magician, Mr. Iceberg Swim. Oh, the pimp? Who I got my game from. <laughs> Check the cravat. Come on, deal with it. I get mad no pussy. I get all the mad no pussy, you guys. If you don't want to buy any of the no pussy I'm selling, I will charge you exactly what I'm paying for no pussy right now. I got the best no pussy in town, you guys. Telling you what, man. I do too. Best no pussy right there. <laughs> don't, hey, don't get no bitty war, no pussy with me in here. <laughs> Give it up. Uh, you guys. Okay, I think I win the best no pussy award. Jamie's winning the no pussy award. <laughs> Jamie has the best no pussy in town. But 
<laughs> Are you selling it though? Because I'm discounting no pussy. I mean, I'm just saying, you don't discount that shit, uh, do you? Free no pussy. Oh, it's free no pussy all day long. <laughs> all right, uh, so apparently I am in a, there is a no pussy surplus in the main lounge tonight, you guys. Seems like that's every night, you guys. You know who's got a no pussy surplus in his life? The next comedian coming to the stage, you guys. Let's give it over, Mr. Josh Getting No Enough, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I find it funny that you're older than me and I still don't get the references. Any of them. Uh, yeah. That's good. Uh, I, I'm 39 years old. I know I'm at like the height of my cool. Like, I mean, unless, unless I'm George Clooney and there's only one of him and I'm not him. So, uh, uh, and I'm getting really weird compliments lately. Um, the other day, uh, I was at work. Someone asked me how old I was. I'm like 39. He goes, you don't look a day over 35. Mm. That's not that's not very much different. <laughs> Twenty five. Yeah. Uh, people are telling me, uh, you know, you'd make a great stepdad. You'd make a cool stepdad. That's not a compliment. Like, <laughs> we're at a fucking bar right now. Well, like, and what are you trying to tell me? Like, is your mom hot? Is that what we're is she single? Or... Is this a recruiting thing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. That's... <laughs> and George just demonstrated consent. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, so the other day, somebody uh, somebody said uh, the phrase "soft as a baby's bottom." Am I the only one not groping babies? I have no idea. Anyone else? Huh? <laughs> I like that one, guys. I really like that one. Uh, hmm. Yeah, okay. So, uh, you know how people are always like, I, I want to die like this, I want to die like that, right? Uh, I think I figured mine out. I want to get assassinated, right? Like, the method does not matter. I just want to be assassinated. That means I'm important, right? I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to be important? Any? No, really. Oh, man, ouch. But, you know, I do think that in the last moments, it would be nice just to know that the whole time someone was thinking about me. Yeah. What? <laughs> so, oh, uh, I have a beard, uh, if you can't tell. Uh, I, I don't like beards. Uh, for me, uh, they're, they're weird, they're itchy, there's like this weird dandruff that comes off your face. Uh, I don't like them, just mm. um, But I decided to grow one, I, I went past where I feel comfortable with it. And I noticed the other day, like, I felt like I achieved a beard. Like, that's such a stupid feeling to have, right? I did nothing for this. I literally did nothing, and this came out. Like, I got depressed. I stayed in my room for a month, and this happened, and... Yeah, yeah, no. That didn't work. Darn. All right, let's try this one. Uh, ten years ago, I had cancer. All right. That's what I was hoping for. I survived, if, uh, if that helps everyone. Um, people are always like, wow, you survived cancer. You battled cancer. I like, no. I didn't battle anything. Like, all I did was sleep, crap, cry, and puke, right? Like, if that's battling cancer, then I battled infancy. Man, you guys. Hmm. All right, let's, let's go to comics. Um... Comics are pretty cool. Um, there are cool things in the comics, like uh, The Flash. Barry Allen is Jewish, right? I think that is the perfect superpower for a, for a Jewish person to have. The power to flee from anything? I mean, come on. Like, I, really? I would suck my own gold fillings out for that one, guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> Yeah. 
Captain Marvel uh, is basically Marvel's version of Superman, right? Like, super strong, they have the same powers, you know, they can fly and whatever. Um, and they also, they only get hurt by one thing uh, when the plot needs to advance, you know? Like, ouch, yeah, no, I had it better the first time, darn. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's, let's go with this one here. Um, I'm usually, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty hyper person. I don't know if you've been, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> usually people are like, Josh, calm down. You're way too hyper. Just calm down. Like, are you on meth? Since junior high. I've been saying this since junior high. No, I'm never on meth. Like, I don't take meth. Like, you could tell that I don't take meth, right? Because, like, nobody who takes meth calls it taking meth. That's... <laughs> Oh, you talk. And I'm not, I'm not like a total loser, though. Like, occasionally I'll do some alcohol, you yeah. <laughs> know. I have fun with that one. Um, so uh, there's a band called Maroon 5. I don't know if anyone knows that. Anyone? Yeah. Uh, band called Maroon 5. Decided to do a Jay Leno thing there. Um, calling myself out on shit. Uh, Maroon 5, uh, I don't know anything about music. I don't even know who they are. So when I heard about Maroon 5, I actually thought it was just like a food additive that gives you butt cancer. <laughs> Their music wasn't much better um, than that. We're going to go ahead and end on this one. Um, I know that prayer doesn't work because uh, every morning I wake up, That's it. That's it. <laughs> all I need. Uh, zip up the 10, go to work, you know? <laughs> Everyone have a great night. Woo! All right. For Joshua and Ox. All right. Uh, I usually call myself the nicest cunt you'll ever meet. I didn't always, like, plan on this, but the veil is so heavy over the damn plebeian's eyes that catering to their bullshit only just feeds the darkness. Um, the other day I was like, okay, well, where did this all start? Like, what went wrong besides a narcissist mother in my life? Um, 4th of July, 2006, Seaside, Oregon, Norma's Seafood and Steakhouse. I don't know if you've been there. They're known for their world-famous clam chowder. Um, let's give you a little idea of the premise here. It's like half this, it was like the size of half this room, staff this room, staff with tables. There's like a two-hour wait out the door, bunch of asshole families that are all sandy and shitty. And uh, my section's full. I have this lovely foreign table that doesn't speak a lick of English. I'm trying to walk them through a menu with no pictures, which they don't understand at all. And in the meantime, I get sat this fucking like 10 top, two families and their menopausal mother, um, who decides that after less than 60 seconds to slam her hands down on the table and ask for some service while she stands up and screams over the whole fucking crowd of people. I politely go over to her. I'm like, hey, you know what? I'll be there as soon as I can. She's like, well, we're fucking hungry. I was like, yeah, that's pretty much why everyone's here, bitch. Um, I walk up to her, ask, you know, is there any drinks I can get you? She slams a water glass down in front of my face. She's like, yeah, well, I would like a clean water glass. If you ever worked in the service industry, you'd know that glasses and scratches on the outside after some time of going through the dishwasher numerous times. I was like, all right, bitch, I got this. <laughs> So uh, I take their order. She proceeds to order the dinner fish and chips that she's going to share with her grandson. And at that point, I looked at him and I was like, sorry, kid. got to take one for the team. Uh, I walk back and uh, grab a clean glass and pretend like I have to go all the way to the back of the kitchen for something as I drag my heels across the floor of a seafood kitchen. I don't know if you've ever been to one of those, but it's fucking disgusting. And I'm not going to say I haven't seen somebody drop the fish on the floor and then continue to serve it. Um, then I found that most pristine glass I could find, swabbed my hand on the bottom of my foot, and just made sure the inside was nice and clean for her. After that, mm -hmm. I went and got the clam chowder. And I was like, you know what? It's really busy. Everybody's out on the floor right now. I'm going to just act like I need to go get some straws out of the dry storage. So I slip in the dry storage, stick my finger two knuckles deep into my butt. That's the first and last time I've ever stuck my finger that deep 
or even in my ass. <laughs> I walk back out to the salad bar and I just look at my friend, give her a little smile and stir up some chowder knife, just dip my finger in there and swirl it. Just dry it right on the edge, just so you don't want to miss a beat, you know? <laughs> I walk up to her and I was like, look at the kid, like, sorry, kid. I serve it to her. Come back a few minutes later, she, licked, she was licking the bowl clean. Like, I felt, I was like, at that point, I was like, my day is done. I felt like I just fucking won the lottery. I was, I couldn't stop smiling. My pander's like, man, you're in such a good mood for having to work this amazing holiday and being stuck indoors smelling like rotten fish. I was like, it's all right, Carrie. Um, so yeah, every time fireworks go off, I was like, you know what, those are for me. All right, up next we have a very funny Jamie Paxter. Let's give her a round of applause, please. What's up, Hot Box? How you doing? Woo, woo. So a Jew walks into a bar and he says, I think this would be the perfect place to film a trans housewife fucking herself with a microphone. <laughs> I am a, uh, I am a 40 year old polyamorous pansexual trans woman. Well, he's like, what the fuck does that even mean? I just said ethics. Don't bring this, ethics this, into this it. This bitch got a cookware fetish? <laughs> All that really means is my superpower is awkward eye contact. <laughs> it doesn't have to be awkward, though. I try to be approachable. Not easily offended. I carry crayons in my purse in case I need to draw pictures. Oh. Sometimes kids have questions. Like, what's your name? Old people have questions too, and I'm sorry old people, I just don't have enough crayons. She got it. A lady this morning when I was at Starbucks, she had questions, she didn't even wait for me to get at the counter. She's like, hey, hey, did you used to work at a 7-Eleven on 99th Street? I'm like, no, that wasn't me. She said, are you sure? Well, I did get my balls removed. Pretty sure that's not where my memories are stored. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck forgets they worked at a goddamn 7-Eleven? That's a traumatizing experience. The only way you forget working at a 7-Eleven is if you've had a lobotomy. Like, some eternal sunshine shit. I don't know. This fucking... Greasy old men shoving hot dogs covered in cheese in their mouths. Who shops at 7-Eleven? People with holes in their hearts. I don't know what shape your hole is. Mine's box wine and hostess donuts. You ever seen... Have you ever met anybody killing life with a big gulp? <laughs> it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. I had a lady the other day, she was, uh, she says, you know, you remind me of that guy from that movie, uh, you know, uh, Silence of the Lambs? But I wasn't offended, because I'd fuck me. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm always fucking me. <laughs> like, literally, I walk around with my junk tucked into my hoo-ha all day long. <laughs> The only time I'm not fucking me is when I'm in bed. Why do guys call their junk their junk? Like, that, I don't understand. Like, I know why I call my junk my junk. I can't wait to get rid of that shit. Maybe then I can stop fucking myself. Hey, uh, what, what else do I want to do here? Uh, what do, what do I want to do here? I, uh, I'm blanking, god damn it, not really, uh, yeah, whatever, uh, so I was, uh, I used to live in Las Vegas, yeah. yeah, I loved and hated Las Vegas, mostly because it reminds me of myself, I can be very pretty at night, but in the morning I'm just littered with empty promises of meaningless sex. <laughs> Yeah. My face kind of resembles a cactus. <laughs> I used to go to this club out in Henderson when I lived down there, mostly for my self-esteem. Because as a 30-something trans woman, nothing will make you feel better about yourself 
than a half drunk black metrosexual. <laughs> Girl, those almond eyes, that long, straight nose, <laughs> they're attentive. It's personal. So I took him home. And we get there, and he's taking off his pants, and I'm like, whoa, you think you're going to put that thing in me? You're crazy. Which is the same thing my girlfriend said when I came home with this manicure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I recently went to uh, Phoenix. Uh, uh, it, it was a good time. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I've been back for, for two weeks. And, and Portland just does not have a cat call game. Phoenix, everywhere I went. Girl, I don't know what you are. I just got to tell you, you look so good walking away from me. <laughs> kind of sweet. Kind of sweet. In Portland, we have grumpy old white men that look at my earrings and say, oh, I used to have cock rings that big. And I'm like, <laughs> first, no, you didn't. <laughs> and second, no. Just no. Here's a little game. It's like, is this an insult, a pickup line, or a compliment? Hey, you ever been to prison? <laughs> You're wrong. There's a pickup line. I'm not. That, that, that's, this is not even a bit. This is not even a joke. This is a white guy in a fucking club in Portland. That was his opening line. You remind me of somebody I was in prison with. And I'm like, yeah, and that's why you're not going to get a date. <laughs> uh, so, uh, how about sports? You guys like sports? Woo. I fucking hate sports. <laughs> I did play football in high school. Not because I wanted to, obviously. Pretty sure it was my stepdad's plan to make sure the girl got beat out of me. <laughs> when I was at home. Cool. And relax, it didn't fucking work. Jesus. After football was wrestling, and that was just awkward. Not that I minded being mounted by pubescent boys with semi hard ons. Just wish they were basketball players. You know, 6'2, 190, not 5'5 five, five and 230. <laughs> One of those boys got a full hard on, and he jumped up and he swore up and down. He's like, I'm not gay, I'm not gay, I'm not gay. And I'd like to believe him. I like to think you could see my inner truth even back then, even back then. But uh, I have Facebook and uh, he's totally gay, which is a shame because he's kind of cute and he's probably not into me anymore. <laughs> my first fling in high school was with a girl who turned out to be a diesel mechanic. <laughs> yeah, the first time we were going to have sex, she's like, where do you want to do it? And I was like, somewhere no one will see us. <laughs> So she took me to the blind school parking lot. At least she moved her tools and put a towel down. So more than I can say for my Tinder dates. That's just Catholic guilt and sexual repression. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm out of time. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, you follow me on Pornhub, hashtag trans housewife fucks herself with microphone. Oops, sorry. Jamie Paxton, everybody! Oh my goodness, you guys. Uh, I don't know, did anybody else for a while hear like some really heavy break beats or, you know, like bass drops? Oh, good. Is that what somebody else heard that? Mm -hmm. oh, I thought I finally turned black. Uh, <laughs> So that's what it's like, right? You just hear bass beats and you're, I, I don't know. You get the uh, shine in, too. Get the shine. I almost started screwing Walker really loud, uh, but I do that anyway sometimes, just because it makes young people really uncomfortable to have an old toothless man start screaming Waka Flocka in their ear on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fucking hilarious. Waka! God damn it, you know. Uh, if you want to make a 12-year-old jump, because this, is, by the way, is not how I'm normally dressed when I do it. I do dress normally to suit my dental work. So just imagine me dressed like, you know, in a dirty pair of boots, and I just stand right next to some 12-year-old, and I just, Waka! Waka! Flocka! And, and uh, they get off the bus, usually, at the next stop, right after that. It's a great way to get a space on the bus. Uh, you guys, 
Coming up to the stage is our final comedian of the evening. You guys, thank you so much for holding in. Uh, that air conditioning lasted for about 20 minutes, and they shut that fucker off. We're getting big old hits in here, but that's all right. We get, we get, we like it hot. We like it muggy. And let's give it up for Brian with a Y. <laughs> Woo! Keep it going for everyone involved. <laughs> thank you for playing along. Well, uh, for those who don't know, no, 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 Brian with a Y, obviously, uh, 30, 33, uh, which is like the perfect age to start flossing. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Right? Yeah. I went to the I went to the dentist recently. Man, was he pissed? He's like, hey, it's not my fault the batteries in my toothbrush died. Yeah. I walked into his place. He was like, how did you know where I live? <laughs> yeah, so I got to find a new dentist now. But it's great. Uh, my brother figured out how to get his son to not watch TV. He just changes the channel to golf. <laughs> yeah, that's how my father put us down for nap time. Pain Stewart. On the back nine. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, my dad's always making up stories about me. Like, we're at this dinner party. He's like, hey, Brian, why don't you tell Dennis here about that time you created Facebook? It's like, no, I created a professional wrestling blog on Facebook. He's like, well, why don't you tell him about that time that you released the animals from the Portland Zoo, you know, and you got 86th. I was like, no, no, I got 86th from Tilt for stealing tokens to play Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, I'm going to take a little look-ski here. Uh, I don't usually have problems falling asleep unless I'm driving. I have a few problems with falling asleep. Uh, have you guys heard about that new movie called Constipation? It hasn't come out yet. <laughs> I like to go bird watching. My favorite kind of bird to watch is a blowjay. <laughs> they have such an interesting call, you know? <laughs> I think I've spotted one. It's natural habitat. Uh, back when I was a teenager, only one of my friends had a cell phone. Although we all had already seen his penis. So it wasn't... Yeah. <laughs> Every Monday, I got this thing. It's called New Music Monday, where... I listen to only new music. Yeah, this week I discovered Lil Windex. Yeah. All right, Kiki. Yeah. <laughs> so I think next week I'm going to go back to New Novel Monday. You know, I think it's better for my brain. Yeah. All right, Kiki. Uh, Wendy Williams said recently that uh, although she's divorced, she's still madly in love with food. <laughs> uh, Ozzy Osbourne's wife, uh, she was she should have been cool with his infidelity, you know. After all, her name is Sharon. <laughs> What did the uh, wifey cow say to the hubby bull? Don't argue. It's a moot point. <laughs> I know, all right. I, uh, I had to go to the doctor recently because I got chest pain and shortness of breath whenever I smoked blunts. <laughs> He's like, Brian, I think that after our exam today, you should smoke only joints. 
I was like, that's, that's reasonable. As long as before my exam today, you warm only your hands. <laughs> yeah, just because I'm, you know, waving, waving them. Just because I'm waving them into third, you know, doesn't mean like dive into home. I, uh, I used to be a professional wrestler, and I don't mean like schoolboy earmuffs, you know, floor mat kind of wrestling. I mean like, you're going to pay for the whole suit, but you're only going to need the edge. That kind of wrestling. Yeah. But uh, I had to retire because I suffered a career-ending injury. Yeah. Someone hurt my feelings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I work in mental health, although some would argue I should be a customer. Yeah. My biggest demon is video poker. Yeah. The only thing better than winning at video poker is watching other people lose. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I learned to stay away from video poker, and it only took two months and five grand. Yeah. Of course, you know, you can't tell anyone in your family that's how you spent your inheritance. You know, big judge. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'm the youngest of three, so uh, growing up, my closet was filled with my brother's shoes and my sister's underwear. Yeah. I'm actually most like my sister, yeah, and she has Down syndrome. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah. We both love music. Her favorite band is System of the Downs. <laughs> yeah, she's got a boyfriend. He's good people too. He too is Downs with the sickness. <laughs> Ooh ah ah ah. <laughs> Ooh, wah, ah, ah. All right, guys, thank you very much. Brian with a Y. Woo! Brian with a Y, everybody! I like that only in the Ming Lounge at 11 o'clock at night is a digital rectangle exam a joke, a thinker. You gotta like, hmm, like a 20-second delay on that's fucking great. Uh, let's see, Wendy Williams. She also looks like she's still really in love with sticking her face into beehives, you know? God damn, is it too soon? Because she faints a lot? I mean, she's not going to stop fainting, so I really don't think... Uh, how can somebody shape like that still, like, oh, I didn't eat, really, what didn't you eat? Um, I'm not shaming her. She's just a terrible person and not a good interviewer. Right. Uh, right. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, my dad also makes up stories about me. Um, well, he's edited me out of all the family photos, and since a picture is worth a, a thousand words, that's like a lot of short stories that my dad's written me out of, I guess, but that's really makes it all about me, if you think about it, you know, I mean, it's why all the entire human history is about the Loch Ness Monster, you guys, there's not a lot of mentions of it. You guys, I want to thank you all so much for sticking around for us, uh, being out here to support us, coming in here at the last minute, you guys could just pretend, Woo! yeah, exactly, we were, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you guys right now, um, some famous comedian who hasn't been accused of anything came in here earlier, and you missed it, and it was great, uh, really killed, uh, or the, well, I don't know, somebody, or if you guys are into people who are accused of stuff, that guy was here too, uh, wasn't he, you're this gang fest, you guys, we were so upset, I don't care what people do, I'm trying to get me paid, I don't give a shit about what fucking Louis C.K. does, you guys, people, look, don't die on the cross of some other comedian's mistakes, go out there and jerk off in front of people yourself if you want to fucking die on the cross for some, I'm not saying do it, I mean, I know I just did say do that, but don't, I mean, whatever. But you know, the point being, don't don't fucking take the lumps for Louis' jerk off. Is my point. You know what I'm saying? You be your own fucking jerk off. All right. Uh, thanks for coming out to the Hotbox. You guys look for us at Hotbox, Hotbox 2.0 online on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to the channel. You don't have to watch them. Just subscribe so I can change the fucking name for the dumb thing I picked when I set up my YouTube account. Uh, you guys, thanks for keeping it spicy, man. Have a good night. Love you. Back up a bit, give me some elbow space I represent Harlem World, not Melrose Place So I'ma lace the 
shoes up with nice baguettes Flamboyant is the label that writes the checks Y'all niggas better stop fronting cause I might get vexed And I'ma run up on y'all and slice your necks with a machete Pockets have a sling more cane than Eddie I represent Uno Trash Nueve Time is money so I stay late I'm quick to slide a playmate Bust off like a tray ain't then vacate Let's do this shit for real, come on now.